right. Hi, Sunita. How are you? I'm amazing. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you so much for having me. Like I was telling you before, I literally just came from an audition, so hence the Gilded Age get up. Oh no, you're welcome. We're, we're, <laughs> we're excited to have you here. I guess we'll kind of just like start at the at the, uh, the beginning of. I got some questions that I'm really excited to ask you about. Um, I read some stuff about how you started as a, as a copywriter. Um, yes. And if you could, yeah, I'd love to hear about that because it was really inspiring when I read some of your story. Oh, thank you so much. Yes, um, like any Indian parent would say, please don't become an actor. It's something I wanted to do when I was 10 years old. And I just knew, I think my grandmother knew too as well. She actually made me watch The Sound of Music for the first time. And so I really wanted that. And uh, any Indian parent would say, you know, absolutely not. We were poor over there. We wouldn't, don't want you to be poor here. So they said to go into business, which actually was a, a really nice thing because a lot of my friends were kind of, forced against their will to become doctors. Um, and I think being a doctor is a calling, much like being an actor. But my parents said, find something creative that you love to do and that you could make a stable paycheck at. And um, I decided on advertising. I really, uh, my, I had a gifted teacher who in seventh grade had us do a um, intro to advertising course. And I remember pulling all nighters in seventh grade, coming up with ideas for a toothpaste company um, that we had worked on. And it was so fun. I mean, the kids that I really worked with too they were so smart and creative and um coming up with commercials and ideas was just it was just a release and so i decided okay if i'm not allowed to be an actor i'll do acting as a you know plays and an improv i'll keep it on the side um but i'll have this practical advertising background and uh, i found out lately like a lot of people who go into communications are also like kind of closeted actors um, but then I did five internships. One of them was writing cards at Hallmark Cards. Um, we had this amazing diversity internship. Um, four kids were selected out of the country. I was very lucky to be one of them. And I got to come out with my own line of Hallmark Cards, spend the uh, entire summer in Kansas City. And it was just, you know, I mean, again, just being surrounded by brilliant minds. It's almost like sketch comedy minds. Um, right and jokes and just funny, smart people who are too smart for their own good. Those are the kind of people that really brought me to life. And um, I did one at Hallmark. I did um, a couple other internships back home since I was 15, um, because I, I also noticed, you know, my parents, they didn't really have any connections. And a lot of the ways that a lot of people that I know get jobs, especially in a cutthroat uh, world like New York in advertising is through connections. I didn't really have any. So I knew I'd have to really bust my ass. So I did about five right. internships. And um, I, I was very blessed. Uh, one of them I got through improv. So that's a really good segue into saying what you do on the outside can really hook you up for jobs later. And I loved improv. So right, that right. got me creative internship. And um, yeah, I went to a place called Miami Ad School. And that was so much fun and um, came to New York City. And my dream was to do advertising in the day and improv at night. Wow. Can I ask you real quick yeah. when you were doing the Hallmark cards? So was that like yeah. you would actually like come up with what's inside when you open it up? That's what that's amazing. Everybody. It was so much fun. And um, there was a really funny section of Hallmark. I'll never forget um, in the comedy department. And these were, I mean, again, like Harvard level smart people. And um, it was called funny, but no was the category. And um, I remember there was this one card that said, um, for your birthday, I was going to make you a present. And then you open it up and it says, but what am I, Amish? And I don't know why, but I thought that was the funniest card. <laughs> but yeah, it was wow. really wonderful. And that, yeah. and, that and, you, and that's what can you kind of prepped you for acting once you got to New York and things like that. You think it all kind of works together to bring you to yeah, where you are now? Yeah, I mean, it's funny. Like, I mean, I call it the slumdog millionaire strategy, but it's really like that whole journey that, life prepares you for and you are put into these different situations eventually it all culminates somehow um right. hero's journey carl you know yeah yeah also campbell's start kind of stuff but yeah i'm really into that kind right. of philosophy yeah right and that and that prepped you for ucb correct and then i, I read with well, 30 rock came from that 
Can I hear about that? Yeah. That was so cool. I heard about some of the stuff that happened there. So that would be cool to yeah, hear about. Yeah, I would love to tell you that story. Yeah, I was interning with this kid, random kid named Donald Glover. No one's ever heard of him. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, poor guy. He tries to reach out to me once in a while. And I'm like, no. <laughs> um, I used to intern with him. And um, I used to uh, I used to intern with a bunch of people who have really done well for themselves. Um, so like I said, advertising in the day, and then I would run over to UCB at night. I had a long distance boyfriend at the time. So I was completely alone in New York. Um, and that's the way I forced myself to meet people. You know, I am pretty extroverted, but I can also be kind of introverted sometimes. And, mm -hmm. um, doing mm -hmm. that internship forced me to be around people and get to know them. Aziz was coming up at the time. This is a very long time ago, but one day, uh, I got an email from Donald and actually I didn't have enough money for Wi-Fi at my house at the time. It somehow came through. There was like Linksys and it just somehow came through on that <laughs> Sunday. And it said, um, we, uh, would you be interested? There was a part, a small little part on 30 Rock that they were having some Indian girls read for. And so I said, um, yeah, absolutely. You know, so I called in sick. I never called in sick to work. And um, yeah, I, I shot it that day. And I remember I had gone in and, um, Tina Faye had come out and her hair was like, you know, it looks like me when I write, you know, you have your hair in a bun and you have your sweatpants on. She's like, are you Sunita? Thank you so much for coming. And I was like, just dumbfounded because I look up to her so much right. and, uh, and it, we shot it. And, you know, it was, it was interesting because, um, again, with hero's journey, I guess, um, and I'm writing for myself more, so I'm like much more aware of it now, but when I was really young, I remember telling my parents, like I said, that I've always wanted this. And they said, it's not going to be as glamorous as you think it is. And it's, it's just a phase. And, um, you know, it's just a fad. And, you know, my dad was like, you know, I wanted to be a Bollywood actor, but I decided not to do it. And look at, you know, he was just, it was, it was interesting how parents come at it. Um, but I got to tell you with all due respect that day on set, when I was sitting in that chair, it really was like a light was shining down from the heavens. Just wow. like this is it. This is what you want to do with your life. And it was being shown to me just kind of like, you're welcome, right? Yeah. But it is also just such a, it's such a difficult industry as well. But I really, I sent, I remember I sent Donald Glover a big bottle of wine just to say thanks for the encouragement because I kind of, I tell him it's a blessing and a curse, but it's like, I definitely, <laughs> I definitely like caught the TV bug that day. Everybody was having so much fun on set and Jane Krakowski and Tina Fey were so nice to me. And I remember Tina was like, I really, really liked that take. And I mean, it was just, it was like right. butterfly happiness. Yeah. That's awesome. Now I really, really want to talk about Daredevil if that's okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited. I, I, I loved season three and watching a Daredevil was amazing you were you were outstanding I, I mean oh, I loved you. it and I would love to hear about a little bit of that experience because that was filming in New York right or, yeah sorry. that was another I mean I gotta say this is like another lucky break it um I at the time was with a manager who sent me in for a role for day player a day player for those who don't know you go in and you it's just for one scene that day and then you leave and the character was talking about how Daredevil had come and rescued her and her father. I'm very close with my father in real life, so I didn't really have to act it too much. And it was really well written. Everything in that show was really well written. I never had trouble memorizing my lines. Um, and then Julie Schubert said, you know, there's another role for Seema Nadine. Uh, yeah. That would be very interesting for you to come in and like, you know, read, read for her. And so I did. And it was supposed to be two to three episodes. Um, and I got it. But I remember, you know, I got to say for the fans of JLE, how hard he works and how good he is and how lovely he is. He would put in like an 18 hour day and go to the gym still. I mean, his work ethic is top notch. And so I was because it was I was a newbie to all of this. I just learned from him, but they fell in love with him. I mean, he's lovely. He's like a brother to me. And and then we did the work together. And they wrote us into more, you know, and we ended up, I ended up going from what was supposed to be two or three episodes into eight episodes. Right. Um, because Marvel writers were just, um, I was telling somebody this the other day, like one of them came up to us and was like, we'd really like to write you in a more because we really love what you're wow. doing. So literally changing the narrative um, 
it happened and it was right. just such a great experience. Yeah. And honestly, that y'all's relationship, like in that, mm -hmm. you know, it's one of my favorite things about season three, because it's like, you really see the struggle the family goes through, through that season of like, and especially how he's struggling with making the right decisions and providing for the family. There's, there's so many scenes in there. I was like, I was wondering, did they film that chronologically? So it was easier to kind of follow as it went. Yeah. Yeah, they did. And, um, it was, I mean, I really, I always, our teachers are really good teachers. Like I went to a place called Maggie Flanagan, which is a Meisner conservatory. And even in improv, they always tell you always choose love, you know, and it as an acting, as an acting uh, choice. And so I really chose J. Ali, um, Ray Nadim, as when I did my own personal acting work on it, he was the love of my life. He was, I mean, I get emotional talking about it, but he yeah. was my person. And to have him lie to me and for and the safety of our child, um, it's been pretty funny, actually. Tina Fey, I read of all her interviews, and she says never to go on Reddit. I'm like totally on Reddit reading what people have to say about their double. Like, Come on, Tina, let him have a break. And I'm like, go on. But there was someone else who wrote back, and he's like, look, I'm a husband and a father. And if I lied about my son's safety, my wife would have every right. <laughs> it was just fun to watch all the arguments happen. But yeah, that was, um, it was chronological. And I wouldn't find out what was going to happen in the next script until I got it. Wow. And it was a very emotional ride for me very very emotional i mean i i would cry myself to sleep sometimes really honestly right. because it was my husband it was the love of my life lying to me and that's right. just that's that's rough that yeah. that one scene when he comes in and the, and is it, the glass is broke and they bust in the bathroom and you guys are in the bathroom and he thinks that you guys are in danger even that i was like that hit me when i, I when i was watching it, i was just like this is <laughs> This is intense. Like I, you know, I'm the same way. I get emotionally even just thinking about it right now. Because yeah. It, it, and then there's another scene that you and uh, the life of me, I can't think of the actors. And he played fall. Yeah, I, I couldn't remember. Yeah. Yeah. He's like when, when when he comes in and and it's I think it's the last episode, correct? When the final yes. episode. Yes. That scene, your performance, and I'm not even just saying it. It, I, I was like shook. A couple things went through my head. I was like. So she has to say one thing, but people are listening. So she has to like write it down at the same time. There's this struggle of not getting caught herself. And it's like, what was that like filming that scene? Okay, with you are him? officially my favorite person who's ever asked me. You, nobody's oh ever asked me this question. Oh. So boy, do I have a story for you. Boy, do I have a story for you. I read that scene and I thought I was going to have a week to work on it because that's when we were scheduled to shoot. So... <laughs> I'm telling you, it's all slum dog. Like you learn and then it's you apply it later in life. I was going to marinate on those lines. I was going to feel them. I was going to walk through the streets of New York saying them to myself. I mean, I had it ready to go. And they wanted to suddenly shoot the next day. Wow. And I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> I was, and the agent I was with at the time, no longer with them. They were like, don't worry, they, they, it'll be fine. You don't have to go in tomorrow. And I was like, the producers are contacting me to go in tomorrow. This is about money also. Hollywood is expensive. They're gonna want me to come in tomorrow. And he's like, no, 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 you're fine, you're fine. And I was like, this is when your training really comes in handy. And for me, it was a really big deal because it was the final scene, right? It was this, it was, it was the end. And so I was like, I freaked out. I started to freak out. I went home and I was like, you can freak out later. I promise you. I talked to myself like I was a little kid and my, the little kid in me was like, no, no, but you got to write this and you got to say things and you got to craft in the, like, if you go to a decent acting school, you have to like, you, you're hard on yourself. I'm not very hard on myself. And so Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm getting like flutters. But anyway, <laughs> I told myself like a little kid, I said, calm down, breathe. You can freak out all you want to right after you walk off set performing the scene. Freak out all you want to then. Have the time of your life. I'll get you some ice cream. I'll buy you some nice shoes. I was very <laughs> like treating myself like a little kid. But I said, for now, right now, we have to focus. And so I had to spend 
like, I don't know, that the whole night kind of just lived like going through it. I And if you see, I'm tired in that scene because I also was literally tired. Um, I knew Eric, I didn't know Eric was going to be on set, but when I got to set, Eric Coulson showed up too. So I was just like, oh my God. Um, but we, we really, I mean, that scene was, and Eldon was so sweet. There was one point where I was doing the scene and he was like, um, he said, uh, he was like, that was amazing. That was excellent. And so when I knew I was on board with him, he was so lovely. I thought, oh. okay, I can, but yeah, that was, I, if I look really scared, I also was actually really, really scared because I wanted to do the scene. Yeah. Wow. It was amazing. And now and he, on said a... to me, he was like, he was like, I would never be able to write and say something different at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you understand how scared this is. That's what I was thinking when I was watching that, I was like, so she's having to write something and remember the lines. Uh -huh. And now, now knowing that you only uh -huh. had a little bit of time to remember the lines. What? That was amazing. That's awesome. Thank you. Oh. And Thank now that it's you. on Disney, Disney, Disney now has yeah. it. Let's keep Disney our fingers Plus. crossed mm -hmm. for, the, for you coming back for a season, another season. That would be awesome. <laughs> oh my gosh. I would absolutely love to come back. I had such a great time on this show. I felt Eric Olson, actually, his neighbors near him inspired the characters for us. I loved the fact that there were no stereotypes, there were no accents. I love the fact, actually, because I grew up in Florida, outside of Tampa, and all the Indians there are doctors. They're all very, very, very affluent. They're surgeons and doctors and make lots of money and drive around in their Mercedes. My parents weren't, but, but most of them were. And I loved the fact that Eric showed an Indian family struggling with money, um, because that can always add to things. And I thought that just added another layer to um, our, ourselves as a couple. And I also love that we could speak Hindi once in a while too. I thought that was really cool. And the food mentions and all of those things. Outstanding. And now that brings us up to uh, your next project, uh, HBO Max's Moonshot. Yes. Yeah. Premiering March 31st for those watching right now. Yes. Can you tell us about yes. that? Because I thought that was Seeing a futuristic uh, a movie compared to say something you filmed before, what was was there something different about the way that was shot, or was it a different experience being that it was set in the future, or is that really the kind of the same? Um, it's funny. I most of my training is improv, so that's where I came up through was comedy. Um, so it was interesting to get Daredevil. Um, but for me, the actors I really look up to very much so are John C. Riley, Steve Carell, and Katherine Hahn. And um, I just wanted to be able to show some type of range. So getting on that set was really, um, how do I say it? It was like, I was just absorbing the whole time. When I, when I learn, I get very quiet and I just absorb and I keep my eyes open and I see what people like Zach Braff or Cole Sprouse or Lana Condor, how simple they are on camera and how funny they are. Um, and they were just lovely, all of them. Uh, I wouldn't say it's too different. It's, I think like there are some very similar elements to comedy and drama, but they really did allow us to do a ton of improv on set. And I really, I mean, I saw the movie last night and it's so cute. And I really, really hope that HBO puts some kind of blooper reel out because um, we were howling laughing at the improv. I mean, Cameron Esposito and Michelle Buteau to be with them in the comedy cast, it was just, they were hilarious. So I really hope HBO puts out some blooper reels. And one of my favorite shows, Eastbound and Down, does that um, with a lot of their stuff online. I know there's right. some really funny outtakes with Will Ferrell. So yeah, I would love to I see I love it. watching outtakes. I go through and watch like the office outtakes or like Parks and Rec. Aren't outtakes. they the best? Hilarious. I, I mean, literally I'll spend hours. Oh, and spend <laughs> yeah. And then because it's improv and people are just having fun and playing on set. But yeah, I, I really hope they put some outtakes out because there were some really funny moments. And then, Sorry, and then go Moonshot, ahead. You're, I was going to say, so you're playing Celeste, right? In, in, in Moonshot? Yes. Um, in the movie Moonshot, I play Celeste, who is a very um, grounded, scientific um obsessed like with science since the day she was a child you know my backstory for her was just it was pretty basically all my friends who probably became doctors in real life I mean um just very all about the grades and um all about meritocracy and um she is the uh, girlfriend's uh fiance of uh Cameron Esposito oh nice 
Another thing that's really awesome I love about like your work and what you do is that you also are a filmmaker and you're very inspiring. I've watched some of your videos where you encourage people to pursue their dreams and like uh, you even inspired me when I was watching it. You, you talked about how like if it's your calling, you know, it's just very encouraging and it's it's really oh, awesome to see that. And and that's something that I, I really think is just, you know, needed in the world today is people lifting other people up like that. And so you've also made uh, sh some short films, correct? I, I, I'm, I'm, I believe it was like at an Oscar. I can't remember the right word. Um, yeah, I made um, a short film. Well, first I wrote it in a, because I have a copywriting background. I used to write TV commercials for everything, a Coca-Cola, Heineken, um, you name it. So I was thinking to myself, well, this would be interesting to take a four week playwriting class and just write a short play. Um, so I took it and my teacher, Webb Will Coxon, who was a sweetheart, encouraged me to enter it into the Samuel French Alpha Broadway Festival. And out of 1300 plays, it got to the top 10, which was great. Wow. It's called A Sorry for Pallavi. And really what I wrote it from was just rage and anger. Um, I think a lot of Indian women particularly are raised to be very subservient, not complain, um, which is odd because uh, I mentioned the goddess Durga um, in, the, in the play. And um, she's the goddess of, you know, really just owning your anger and making things happen um, and, and, and speaking your voice, you know? Um, so in the play, when, when it was a play, a friend of mine from UCB, uh, Kate Chamuris, who's a director, said, you know, it would be really interesting to make this into a film. So raised $20,000 for it. And wow. I literally, it's like Black Swan meets The Parent Trap. I play two very opposite characters, um, one very stereotypical Indian woman, and then um, another, a very Americanized Indian woman. And they fight each other on what to wear to a, a Indian wedding. Um, and really the reason I wrote it, and I say this to everybody, is in order to change the narrative, you must write it, um, especially if you're an outlier in any sense. Um, but I literally fight the stereotype in that film. It's written in a very farcical perspective because I wanted to show casting directors that yes, you can get the girl with the accent, um, who's very grounded, but you can also get the sassy, bitchy, funny girl who like is going to call people out on their BS, kind of like an Indian Samantha Jones. So um, yeah, that that's exactly why I wrote it. I really want people to write their own narratives. I, I think the, the people who've really excelled really have. I mean, I always say this, I wish I could just, you know, like slap myself and go back 10 years ago because I mean, all those people from UCB who are doing so, so well now in our household names, they all wrote their own stuff, especially again, if you're different, if you're a person of color, if you're non-binary, if you're different in any way, shape or form, you have to write your story. And I didn't even think anybody would want to see my stories. Um, but yeah, we got into an Oscar qualifying festival at the Rhode Island Film Festival, Flickers. Wow. You're lovely. And we won uh, Best Comedy Shorts. That so was really great. And you have to show people what you can do because a lot of times I really thought that it was going to be like an acting contest like when you would go and audition I really thought it was going to be like a talent show and I think it's because I was raised in an immigrant household where everything is taught to you that it's a meritocracy it's really not so much of it is nepotism connections luck right place right time look and uh, if you want to change the narrative again you literally have to write it well, you're amazing. I just want to let you know, thank oh, you thank so you. much. I wanted to also, I heard you were back to the future fan. Huge fan. Oh my God, Michael J. Fox. The first time <laughs> I, saw it, I was like, sign me up. That's the boy I'm going to marry. That, that is like my favorite movie. Those movies are literally like, oh. like, I love them so much because they inspire <laughs> you and they just, there's something about those movies that are just so magical. And I was like, I saw that online and I was like, that's awesome. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. I wish I, my closet door was open. I had, I literally printed out a Michael J. Fox shirt with, he just looks very- <laughs> One time very... I, I, <laughs> one time I went he, to the there, mall. He has, like, there's nobody with the it factor that he has. Nobody in our day and time. Michael like, J. Fox nobody. is amazing, amazing, amazing. I, I, I went to, when I first came to LA, I went to the mall where they filmed that scene and I literally acted out with my phone the Doc Brown Marty I was like Marty Marty and I was like Doc and I just went back and forth I love it so much anyways <laughs> oh my god I love I love other back to the future bands love it. <laughs> well thank you so much for your time we are so excited oh. for you and and thank you for everything that you do and and for your encouragement and we wish you the best we can't wait to see you in Moonshot and hopefully maybe another season of Daredevil we'll see fingers crossed and uh, yeah, we hope you have a great day. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right. Bye.
Bye.